Hi, this is Adam with FreeFly Systems, and today I'm going to be telling you about the Altex DIU Blue Package. Uh, before we get started, I just want to make a note that this is not a substitute to thoroughly reading and understanding the documentation and the manual that we provide in wiki format on our website. The reason we're offering the DIU Blue Package is so that our uh, federal use case and DoD customers will have a approved piece of hardware that they can operate with. Okay, so let's get into it and talk a little bit about what's different about the Altex DIU Blue Package. Uh, primarily, the difference between this and our standard non-blue version is that it comes with a blue cubed flight controller. Uh, you're also going to be getting the UXV navigator tab utilizing the RFD 900 radio. And then it's going to come with a pair of batteries for flight. It's going to come with a cargo landing gear. And it's also going to include a charger and a case for the aircraft itself. All right, now we're going to dive into the navigator tab and interfacing with the buttons and switches and the software. So let's take a look. On the UXV tab, uh, we have two control sticks uh, and it's set up as a mode two control. So that means your throttle or climbing and descent is going to be on the left stick up and down. Uh, your yaw control over the aircraft for left and right is going to be on that same stick. And then on the right, you're going to have your cyclic or directional control for back, left, right banking of the aircraft. And depending on what mode you're in, um, it will either control the speed or the angle of the aircraft. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So just a quick uh, overview of the buttons on top. Upper left corner, we have our position mode button. One click on that will either bring you back to position mode or uh, put, it in, put you in there if you haven't been in it. And upper right is going to be your altitude control button. So one click of that will put you into altitude mode. You also have return to home which will do an automated landing if you let it, um, is this uh, directional pad here on the left. A center click is a button click, and that will activate return to land. In the software screen here, we have cue ground control loaded up. So this would assume that you already have the aircraft uh, set out, pre-flighted, and powered up so that the navigator tablet will connect to and see the aircraft. If the aircraft doesn't have power already uh, uh, plugged in, then it's not going to connect. So. Once you have that all connected and powered up, uh, we have our view of Q ground control right here in front of us. And we have various telemetry showing our battery level, um, our heading, uh, and some other things. So there's different modules within Q ground control, and this isn't meant to be a full in-depth walkthrough of Q ground control. So we're just gonna dive into some of the basics that you'd wanna look at before you fly. If you go to the vehicle setup, which is the gear icon in the upper left-hand corner here, you wanna go down to the safety tab and then you want to double check that all of your fail safe settings are appropriate for the mission at hand or the flight that you're about to make. So right here, we can see that our uh, fail safe action for low battery is return mode. And we do currently have that programmed so that the default is going to be at 44 volts. So it gives you a little bit of juice to get home if you were on a longer range mission, but you may need to change that depending on what's appropriate for the distances you're flying. And in this case is showing 19%. So you just raise that a little bit if necessary. RC loss failsafe trigger is set to return mode. That's going to be the default most of the time. You would select a different option depending on if you're moving with the aircraft or stationary. Next, we have your geofence uh, failsafes. The default is warning. You can just leave it at that for now. And then most importantly, the return to home settings. You want to make sure that your altitude is going to clear any obstacles in your immediate area. So for example, if you fly to the other side of a building or a tree and you were to lose connection to the flight controller, you'd want to make sure that this altitude is going to clear that obstacle before it gets back to you. But do keep in mind, you don't want it to clear too high. So you wouldn't want it to go uh, above your allowed altitudes, just enough, maybe a 10 or 15% margin to clear those obstacles. Uh, the default here is a loiter of 45 seconds above your uh, landing, and then it's going to do that at 10 meters, so right around 30, 33 feet, uh, and then it will land after that 45 second period. So just make sure this is all set up appropriately, and then you're, you're ready to move on to the next step of flying. For that, we'll click on the little uh, airplane symbol here, which will take us to the fly module. You'll see your aircraft on the map. Then we'll go ahead and uh, walk you through arming the aircraft and taking off. Let's head out to the field. We're going to just go through a brief uh, 
checklist on the uh, Alt-X blue DIU package and get up and running. So a couple other things. Uh, again, I mentioned earlier that you want to use the uh, wiki and manual. There's a full checklist uh, in that manual that you should reference. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to go over some of the really key essential safety critical items. Uh, but do reference that checklist and build out your own specific to your operations uh, based off that list. So to get started, we just want to look at the Alta X, check it out, make sure it's flight worthy. And uh, to start out, I'm just going to pull off the straps here on the propellers. I'm just going to open the Alta a little bit. And I found a convenient place to store them right here on the booms, just so they're waiting and ready to go for you afterwards. All right, then I'm going to continue just opening up the Alta-X booms till they hit their stops. And then you've got two red anodized aluminum uh, boom latches here. Go ahead and fully engage both of those. And I like to do that whether I'm flying or not, just to build good habits. Next, uh, we'll go to boom number one or motor number one here. And I just leave the toad and connection point to the landing gear unlatched for now. It's just connected. That way we have a turntable. So it just makes our inspection really convenient. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, spin this. There's no battery power on board. And I'm looking for any sort of uh, ticking, grinding noises, and I wanna see that there's nice smooth bearing run on this motor. Check the propellers for any nicks, cracks, or scrapes. Inspect the booms, make sure there's no cracks from mishandling, and uh, the strut connecting the boom to the chassis ring. Just make sure that that's secure and uh, in good order. So we would just follow through and do that really quick. All right, so just a basic pre-flight. And uh, next, we wanna make sure that our UXV navigator tab is powered on, booted up, and then we've got our QGC, Q Ground Control software loaded up on the screen. So that's looking good. And it's best practice to have your controller on as the first point of contact and off last so that the alt is always under a point of control. With the DIU blue package, the uh, RFD 900 radio that I mentioned earlier, it's going to be on board uh, with two antennas. And you just wanna point those antennas down, make sure that the SMAs are secure. So there's one over here and one over here, and that our GPS antenna is secure, everything's in good order. And then we'll go ahead and align the Alta in the orientation that we want over our cargo landing gear. And then I'm gonna securely latch the towed lever there uh, to make sure that that's set. Next, we'll go ahead and throw the batteries on board. And you just lay those on top, make sure the strap's out of the way. Just pull two straps over for one side, lay the straps across and grab your other battery. Strap that side down. All right, and with that, we're set up and we're ready to move on to uh, takeoff. All right, so at this point, we're assuming that the aircraft's been pre-flighted, it's been inspected that we've got our flying site set up and we've set up our fail safes appropriately for the location we're flying and the type of operation that we're doing. So we're gonna turn our attention to a few uh, flight critical items. We've got our controller powered up. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in both batteries and we just wanna make sure that those get, so they're fully engaged there. Aircraft's gonna boot up. All right, while it's doing that, I'm also watching my GPS for a green light to indicate that we've got a GPS lock. We wanna make sure we always have a GPS lock before takeoff. Otherwise the drone won't know where its uh, takeoff position is if it needs to return home in an emergency. So once the aircraft's connected to the software, you'll see some telemetry reading out here. We've got 32 satellites, 100% battery, and uh, all our telemetry is active. One other thing of note, if there's a preloaded mission already on the flight controller, it's gonna present you with the start mission um, slider here. Uh, so note that if there's anybody by the aircraft and you were to slide that, it will fire up the motors and initiate a takeoff. So make sure if you're not intending a takeoff, you just close that uh, to be safe. And with that, we'll go ahead and show you flight controls and a takeoff. All right, we're ready to arm the aircraft and take off. So to start the motors, we're just going to hold down and right on our throttle. Arm. We get an armed indicator. And then without delay, we just want to give a little gentle push up on the throttle and continue holding up gently until you're about 10 or 15 feet in the air. When you let go of the sticks in position mode, Alt will just hold a nice position, compensating for wind drift and waiting for your next command. 
Now I'm gonna show you the difference of altitude mode. So I'm gonna just click the upper right button by my right index finger. We get feedback on the screen audibly and visibly that we're in altitude mode. And immediately I notice that we just have a little bit of wind drift very slowly to the right. So to compensate for that, I can just input a little bit of less stick input, bring it back out in the middle here, and then just hold just enough to hold the aircraft in position. It is important to note that flying without GPS takes a little bit more skill. Uh, so if you don't have experience with that, we recommend flying on a small drone, like a, a small indoor drone and practicing without the Alta. All right, I'm gonna go back into GPS mode anytime I want, just by clicking the GPS position button. Flight mode. Goes right back into holding position for me, compensating for the wind drift. And that's the basics of flying the aircraft. Start out slow, just make small inputs. Make sure you've got plenty of space as you get to know the aircraft and its uh, handling characteristics. All right, I'm gonna slowly pull the right stick back towards us to ease the aircraft back over a landing position. We're roughly where we took off from, maybe just a little bit to the right. Gonna let go. You wanna let the aircraft in position mode fully stabilize, compensate for any wind that's present. And then when you're happy with the position over the ground, pull down gently on the left stick, but get a nice steady rate of descent going. You wanna connect with the ground and fully transition the weight of the aircraft to the landing gear. There we go, nice touchdown. Hold that left stick all the way down for a five second count and the aircraft disarms. So one last important point is knowing how to do an emergency disarm of the aircraft should it be required. So for that, I'm gonna just arm the aircraft. Armed. Motors are running on the ground. You just click the armed button. The text on the screen presents a disarm command and we can slide that to disarm. So the emergency disarm function is available to you at any time whether you're in flight or on the ground at idle, uh, it's only to be used in an emergency where you didn't have any other option to disarm the aircraft. All right, so one last point uh, before we wrap up. If you're an existing operator of the standard Alta X, uh, the one that came prior to this that we also still sell, um, there are some differences just in parameters such as automated flight speeds and some other things. Uh, so we're not gonna cover all those in depth today, but we will have knowledge base articles listing the differences between standard parameters and the parameters on this version of the aircraft. So please make sure to go and check those out if you're a heavy user of the existing platform so there's no surprises in, in those variances. And with that, thanks for watching this brief intro to the DIU Blue Alta X. Uh, if you have any more questions about it, feel free to reach out to support at freeflysystems.com uh, or check out the product page on our store. We look forward to seeing these out in the world flying. Take care.